Well, hello everybody and welcome to another episode. And today I'm going to show you some of the cheapest fully featured 35 millimeter film cameras that you can buy. If you want to take your first steps in film or if you just fancy a new film camera, these should be on your radar. There are two SLRs, I think. Yeah, one, two SL, no, three SLRs. We've got one rangefinder and we've got one point and shoot to show you. Some of them are fully manual, some have auto exposure and one has auto focus too. They're all from the cheaper end of the market, but they don't do anything less than cameras costing several times as much. And if you're worried about quality, don't be. These cameras have stood the test of time and the proof of the pudding is, as they say, in the eating. So let's check out the cameras. Well, the first one I want to show you is this lovely little camera. This recently cost me £25 off an eBay auction. It's the Vivitar XV20. And this is a consumer camera. It's got a K-mount lens mount, so it will accept, gosh, probably hundreds and hundreds of lenses from various manufacturers, Pentax, and many, many others, you know, chin on. Uh, the list is endless. There are hundreds of lenses that will fit this little camera. It's auto exposure only. So there is no manual exposure adjustment on this camera. So it's got aperture priority auto exposure, which personally I much prefer over shutter priority. So this is a really nice, easy, simple little camera to use. Just switch it on, set it to auto and off you go. To control depth of field, set your aperture to whatever you want the depth of field to be and the camera will take care of the shutter speed so it's really simple to use. It's a very small camera too, really tiny which I really appreciate. It's not got too many bells and whistles, it's got everything you need and nothing you don't. Let's have a closer look at this camera just so you can see it in more detail. Focus, please. Thank you very much. So there is our Vivitar camera. And this is a lovely little camera. As you can see, it's really small. It fits on my hand, no problem. It's not very tall. It's not very deep. So this is a camera you can wear around your neck all day with no problems. Uh, it's got the usual or, you know, conventional layout what became a conventional layout for its top plate and controls. So we've got very simple control dial here. You'll see there are no shutter speeds. It's just off, auto, X, which I think is a flash setting, and B. And there we are. Those are the only things we've got on there. We've got, uh, I think, a hot shoe. Yeah, that is a hot shoe on here. And we've got the... Uh, film Rewind Plus, what is this? Film Speed Setting also on this side. So to rewind the film, literally bring out this handle and just wind it back into the canister. That's a really nice thing that digital doesn't have. It's a very mechanical, tactile thing. To open the camera back, just lift up that same control and the back will open. We've lost our focus. Come on, come on back, please. That's it. And there is the shutter. It's a metal shutter. So I'm guessing this camera was made by Cosina or Chinon or somebody like that. I don't know. But there we are. Very nice little camera indeed. So as I say, this camera recently cost me 
The princely sum of £25, it's in perfect working order and it really does show you that the bargains are still out there. Despite the price increases that have taken place, the bargains are still out there. This camera came with a lens, it's the Vivitar 50mm uh, 1.8 and this is a really nice lens. I'm going to review this on the channel soon. I've not shot it very much but initial impressions are very good indeed it's a lovely lovely piece of glass and it really exceeded my expectations but more on it in a, another episode suffice to say that for 25 pounds you can get yourself an aperture priority auto exposure 35 mil film camera it'll shoot any kind of 35 mil film you like and it's got a wonderful lens could you really do better I honestly don't know. That is a proper, proper bargain. Okay, now next I've got something very nice to show you. It's this camera. This is point and shoot camera. This is the Konica. What model is it? I don't even know what model it is now. C35 MF, which is strange because this is actually an autofocus camera. So why it's called MF? I really don't know. It's a lovely little camera. I do love points and shoots, actually. I really appreciate a camera that will do everything for you, that will expose for you, that will focus for you, that will take care of everything for you, that will set the film speed for you. These late points and shoots, this is, I would guess, late 80s, early 90s, maybe even late 90s camera but these late points and shoots really were state of the art if you like this type of camera and don't turn your nose up at points and shoots because some of them have great lenses and this is a case in point this has a Konica Hexanon 38 millimeter f 2.8 and that is just right near close to my favorite focal length which is 40 millimeters so this is a really cool street camera it's got a unusually for a point and shoot it's got a filter thread so you can actually put a filter onto this lens um, so for example if you've got an ND filter that you want to use you can put it on there and because the exposure control is within the lens body then the camera will meter for that filter. So that's a really useful feature. Let me show you the camera more closely. So there it is. And it really benefits from the technology that the late film cameras had. It's auto everything. There's the nice Konica Hexanon lens. That's a beautiful lens. I've not actually shot this camera yet, but I am expecting some really good results from it. The top plate is really simple. All you've really got is an on off switch and a shutter button. Curiously, the shutter button doesn't seem to lock at the off position. That's quite odd. Oh, there's also a rewind position. So you turn that to rewind when it's time to rewind your film. So a very, very simple top deck. At the back also really simple. Let's open it up just so you can see it. So again, really simple inside this, I would guess is a DX camera. So pop your film in there and it will automatically read DX coded film cartridges. So a really cool camera. I do hope I've not actually used this camera yet, but I do hope that when it rewinds, when it electronically rewinds, it doesn't drag the leader of the film into the canister because I do like to develop my own film and it's a big pain getting that uh, out of there. This camera is really similar to my favourite point and shoot, the Nikon L35AF. And I think this camera was built to be a rival to the Nikon. And as far as I can see, it's equally as good. It's a very similar size. It's got very similar capabilities. It has a very similar lens. 
The L35AF, the Nikon camera, I've seen that on sale for 200, 250 pounds. That the, the price of that camera really has gone uh, crazy. This camera I bought about three weeks ago for 25 pounds. So if you want a really capable point and shoot, don't worry about your MJU2s or your L35AFs, get one of these 38mm f2.8 uh, f lens with autofocus and auto exposure. If you like point and shoots, this is pretty much state of the art and as good as they got. Right, let's check out another SLR now. Gosh, this is a heavy one after the point and shoot. This is a uh, an all metal camera from the you know, really over-engineered days of classic cameras. I guess this is from the late 60s, early 70s sometime. It's the Prince Flex TTL. It's a bit confusing because it's also got a chin on badge on here, but it says Prince on uh, Prince Flex on here. So I'm not quite sure what's going on there. Probably chin on made it, I would think, and it's a really capable camera it's fully manual there are no automatic settings on this camera it's got an m42 lens mount screw mount so again just like the k-mount camera we looked at earlier there are hundreds possibly thousands of lenses that will fit on this camera made by many 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 manufacturers the Western manufacturers, the Eastern block manufacturers, the small manufacturers, the big manufacturers, everybody used M42. So this is a really good camera. This and cameras like it are really good uh, if you want to find a really nice lens. Most of the Carl Zeiss Jena lenses are M42, so you can shoot those on here. Or, you know, if you want a really good really good cheap lens this is the chin on auto reflex uh, f1.855 i'm guessing this is a pentax lens or you could go for the original pentax version the 55 mil f1.8 super tacoma that's a beautiful lens and it's really cheap let's look at this camera close up and there we are there's our Prince Flex slash chin on. I don't know if you can see the chin on badge there. Quite odd because it's also badged as Prince Flex up here, but there we are. Shutter speeds on this camera are all at the front and it does make quite a mighty old noise when you fire it. It's not so bad actually. Not as bad as some SLRs that I've used. The top deck is really simple. There's not even a shutter speed control on it because that is on the front on this camera. There's a film counter here, a shutter release here, uh, and a film rewind on the top here. The dial is a passive dial that you just set to remind you what film is in the camera. It doesn't actually do anything other than that, but it can be really useful. That is a really useful feature if you don't use your camera for a long period. So film rewind in the usual way. Nice little handle, windy windy, there we go. So yeah, a really nice camera. I'm not sure what shutter type is in here. Let's just have a look. Oh, so we've got the metal shutter there. That looks like Chinon's work to me but this is very much a camera that reminds me of the Pentax cameras of the era and I think it was designed to compete with those cameras to sort of mop up the um, uh, the uh, buyers who couldn't quite afford the Pentax but really really wanted one maybe they would come to this camera and it's a great camera in its own right it's simple it's manual it's very well built. It stood the test of time. And it's likely to go on for another 50 years. These cameras really are tanks. I bought this camera, gosh, about a year ago. And again, I paid £25 for it. Really cheap camera, beautiful lens, 
an absolute bargain. If you're looking for a film SLR, grab one of these, they're fantastic. Now, if you want some rangefinder film fun, you could do a lot worse than invest in one of these little beauties. This is the Zorky One rangefinder. It's an entirely manual camera. It's a very, very small camera and it's an exact copy of the 1932 Leica II. So this is a really nice little camera and it will give you the authentic 1930s photography experience. And that's actually no bad thing. It's a great thing to learn on a manual rangefinder because you become familiar with light, you become familiar with distance, you're part of the process rather than being divorced from it with a, a, an, an all automatic camera that does everything for you. You're really involved in the process and you're really involved in making those images. Now, I bought this camera probably around a year ago and I paid £40 for it. It was in an auction. It didn't go terribly high. It came with this beautiful Indostar 22 collapsible lens. So this lens will collapse and this whole entire camera will go in a pocket. It needs to be a big pocket for sure, but this camera will go in a pocket and that's probably the one of the best things about these cameras is their size. I like their design. I love the way they look. I think they're beautiful pieces of industrial design, but I really appreciate them for their small, small size. Um, I do like a small camera. I don't like carrying around a great big hulking machine with me all day. So for me, small is always better. Let's have a look at this camera close up. So there's the Zorky one with its collapsible in the start on the front there and it really does look a lovely little machine. I love the offset of the lens to about a third of the way across the camera. I love the design of this little turret, this little housing here for the rangefinder and the viewfinder. It's just a beautiful machine. I cannot think of a better example of industrial design. The window for the viewfinder is here. The window for the rain, windows for the rangefinder are, wait a minute, are here and here. Um, the top plate is pretty simple. We've got a wind on control, shutter release, shutter speed dial, which we must be careful never to change before winding on, on these former Soviet Union cameras. Otherwise, you'll damage your camera. It's got not many shutter speeds from, what have we got, from 1 25th all the way up to 1 500th plus B, so there are no slow speeds. So this is a really, really simple machine that forces the photographer to become creative, and that's going to increase your not only your familiarity with cameras and your understanding of the way they work, but your familiarity with the whole process of photography and the whole process of making images. This camera is a bottom loader, which means that you have to take the bottom off to load it. It's slightly more faff, slightly more complex than, well, most other cameras actually. Um, and it involves taking out this uh, take up spool putting your film on here and you then drop the film and the take up spool in as one piece there is actually a video on it in uh, my early videos from maybe about three years ago so you, if you're interested you can find out how it all works there so a beautiful little machine one of my absolute all-time favorite cameras just a lovely little thing. It's an exact copy of the Leica 2. The Leica 2 is a lovely camera. It's slightly better finished than the Zorky and the Fed versions, but not very much. Um, there were some economies made for making these cameras in very large numbers, but you know, it's, it's uh, 
not too far off the original and it's still a very very nice machine there are two windows actually i should have shown you let me show you over here there are two there are two windows one for the rangefinder and one for the viewfinder let me see which is which okay so this one on the outside here focus please thank you this one on the outside here, this is for the rangefinder, so that's what you look through to focus. And this one here is the viewfinder that you look through to compose, so rangefinder, viewfinder. And that does make using this camera a little slower than using some other cameras, but that's a good thing as well. It's not always a good idea to, you know, rapid fire your images and uh, just hope for the best. It's a good thing sometimes to slow down, to think what you're doing, to wait for the shot and to develop your ability to see a shot. I think that's really important. But aside from all that, it's a great little camera if you know you want to take your first steps in film or if you want to try some, uh, try a, a like a style rangefinder it's a great camera for that and it's a great camera for learning manual photography on too they're very reliable they've stood the test of time and they're likely to last for many years to come so a real bargain that i bought for 40 pounds and uh, at that price i don't think you can go too far wrong finally let's have a look at this camera this is a camera i've featured before on this show but it's a fantastic machine and if you don't know about them well now's your chance to find out these are the practica cameras that were made by pentacon in the old east germany when they were uh, part of the uh, fsu countries i'm not absolutely sure exactly whether they were part of the fsu but they were certainly aligned to uh, that block of countries uh, and they made these cameras and they're lovely lovely cameras they're quite large cameras they're quite simple cameras they're fairly light not too heavy very simple all manual camera everything you need and nothing you don't with again an m42 lens mount they were made in many many different models this is the mtl 5b but there were lots of other mtl models MTLs 3, 4 and 5, LTL with all manner of numbers. This one I think is, is one of the nicer ones, the MTL 5B, because the um, rangefinder screen has a, a diagonal split screen, so that's really useful. One of the best um, camera viewfinders, SLR viewfinders that I've used, actually it beats a lot of other more expensive ones nice big bright finder with that diagonal split in it very nice let's take a closer look at the camera and there is our practica one thing to note about the practica cameras is the shutter button is positioned in a perfect place to find it with your finger it's here right there they're quite loud cameras so here we go that's not too bad, actually. I remember it as louder than that. Yeah, that's not too bad at all. Um, the top plate is really simple. Um, wind lever, shutter speed dial, uh, combined with film speed adjustment, rewind lever, and what looks like a hot shoe on top. It's an M42 mount I've got on here, this lovely Helios 44 at the moment, the 13 blade Helios. Beautiful lens, but you know, as with the other M42 camera, the chin on, there are just hundreds, maybe even thousands of lenses that will fit on here. So you certainly won't go short of lenses for this camera. The body is covered with this nice softy, softish plastic sort of vinyl. Uh, and I believe actually the top deck, although it sounds and feels like metal, is actually metalized plastic. So that's quite a cool technical process to be going on at the time. I really like these cameras. They're very simple and they remind me of uh, the Nikon FM actually. They're that kind of camera. 
just a simple manual camera, a meter in the viewfinder, adjust the settings to get the meter right and take your shot. Just a really nice machine. These cameras, price, well, they can be found very, very cheaply. I've seen them go as cheaply as 20 to 25 pounds with a lens. It's usually a Carl Zeiss Jena Tessar 50 f 2.8, but that's a beautiful lens. And if you want to start film photography, £25 for an SLR with a lens is a real bargain. And don't forget that M with that M42 lens mount, you can experiment with loads of different lenses as well. So you really are spoilt for choice for optics with a camera like this. A lovely old camera. It stood the test of time. They're available from around £25 with a lens and that to me is an absolute bargain that shouldn't be missed if you're looking for a cheap film camera that's fully featured and will last. So there we are, five fantastic film cameras, all available very cheaply, around about 25 to 40, 50 pounds or so. All of them are bargains. If you want a film camera if you're looking for a film camera don't miss these so coming up what have we got coming up i'll tell you one thing we've got coming up and it's this look at this polaroid sx70 this was sent to me very very kindly by klaus tomasini so many many thanks klaus for this camera i'll be reviewing and testing it on the channel shortly and no doubt we will see plenty more of this camera in upcoming episodes. I did have one of these before but Klaus knew that I was looking for one and, he, and uh, he's so kindly sent me this one. It just absolutely bowls me over when people send me things and uh, I, I just can't thank you enough. So many, many thanks to Klaus. I've already got some film for it. So we've got some, we've got two packs. This stuff ain't cheap, is it? We've got the SX70 colour film and we've got the SX70 black and white film. So we're going to have lots of Polaroid fun coming up soon. Dr Edwin Land, the man who invented and created this camera, is reputed to have said, if it's not impossible, it's not worth doing. And this camera... An SLR that will eject an instant film image that develops in daylight. This camera is as near to impossible as you can get. Just think of trying to create one of these. What an achievement. Just absolutely stunning. And a beautiful machine too. These are still really popular today. So we'll be looking at that very soon. We've also got an episode coming up with some nice cheapy lenses around about the f1.8 f2 mark some more lovely lenses of which this little vivitar will be one so stay tuned for that as well many many thanks for watching this episode today please don't forget to like subscribe and ring that bell before you go we're almost at 30,000 subscribers Chuck us a sub, it would be very nice to get to 30,000. Many, many thanks to subscribers, to everybody who's just joined us, to people who've been with us sometime, to people who've been with us right from the beginning. Thanks so much for your support. It really is appreciated. And many, many thanks also go to patrons. I've said often on this channel that we couldn't do what we do without you, and we really couldn't. So many, many thanks for your support. It is really greatly appreciated. And if you like the content on this channel, why not consider becoming a patron yourself? You can do it very cheaply from $1 a month. You can give more if you like, or you can give as little as you like. That's just up to you. So that's it from me for now. I will see you next time for some more xenography.